David in Goshen, New York writes, my first question is in regards to variable crossovers on subwoofers. In previous videos, you've explained how potentiometers work for volume control by varying the resistance against a voltage. However, I don't recall coming across a video on how this works for a variable frequency range pot. How does this work compared to the one that controls volume? Is something different going on here? Care to share how this works at an engineering level? <laughs> sure. So David is right. If we just take a standard potentiometer, now let's get with our, our terms. We know that a potentiometer is a variable resistor. So picture a, you know, we know what a resistor is, right? A resistor resists current and voltage. So if you put a voltage into a resistance, it's going to resist it, right? The simplest way to do it. So if we wanted to make a fixed uh, volume control, like a stepped attenuator, we would have two resistors. We'd have one that's in series with the signal and one going to ground. So let's say that this is a 10K resistor and this is a 10K resistor. And the signal is going to go through here and over here we measure uh, whatever, uh, 10 volts. And over here at the output where we've run it through that resistive divider, we're going to measure half that because the resistors are equal. So we're going to have 5 volts. Okay, simple, easy peasy. A pot or a potentiometer is the same thing, except let's just call it a 10K pot. This resistor, this one that the signal is going through, is laid out in a round form. So the, 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 the carbon, the whatever the material it is made out of, is accessible, uh, kind of like you took apart that resistor and you, you made it accessible to a wiper, what we call a wiper and that wiper rubs against. So you're going so from zero to 2K to 3K, 4K, and finally 10K. And all along this resistor, you can pick different resistances. And then if you have a 10K at the output of the pot, then it, it will have half, half more, more, more like that, okay? And as he says, it's dividing the voltage. Now, how does that work with a frequency pot? Well, very simply, it is no longer dividing voltage. It is giving you a changing resistance. So when we want to build a filter, we want to have a variable resistor against a capacitor or a capacitor into a variable resistor. So let's just take what's going to be the simplest. I think a low pass filter. So here's our 10K resistor. Right? This, this is our fixed resistor. And we're going to put a capacitor to ground. All right? We're going to put a signal in here. Now what happens is this signal goes into this 10K resistor, and you have your capacitor here. At some frequency, this capacitor, which let's say for real low frequencies, uh, it's, it, it doesn't, it, it, the low frequencies won't go through it because the cap's too small. Uh, and it says, I don't even see you there. So from 10 volts here, get 10 volts here. But at some point, as you start raising the frequency, this capacitor becomes reactive, which means it mimics a resistor. And it is a frequency variable resistor. It's the easiest way to look at it. So as it goes higher in frequency, this becomes a resistor and it starts dividing. So low frequencies, you wouldn't even know it's there. As you turn the frequency up, all of a sudden, it becomes a voltage divider to the point where at some point it's a short circuit and everything is going through there. So that whole 10K is <laughs> right off to ground, right? Now just instead of this 10K resistor, put a pot. Simple, right? Got a capacitor, the pot is changing resistance and that fixed resistor that made this thing roll off at that frequency is now changing, and that frequency point is changing as you change the resistance. Hope that made sense. All right, thanks for the question.